The slapping of sedition cases against a teacher and a parent in Bidar Shaheen school has created an uproar in the state. Acting on complaints that an anti-CAA play was staged at the school where the Prime Minister was allegedly abused, policemen made as many as five visits to the school to interrogate the students as young as nine years old. And by doing so, they have once again ignited the conversation about sedition law. But what is sedition law? Section 124A of the IPC defines sedition as words, signs, physical representation or any other action that brings or attempts to bring hatred or contempt or attempts to excite disaffection towards the government established by law. In the past few years alone, from songs to plays and even social media posts have been labelled seditious. But what does it mean to be booked under the sedition law? As part of the offences against the state, sedition is a serious charge as it is a cognizable, non-bailable offence that carries the threat of life imprisonment. As many as 233 people have been slapped with the charge of sedition for their alleged anti-national activities according to the latest official government data. But just because a sedition case has been filed against you doesn't mean that you will be convicted. In fact, conviction rates remain low because in many cases, charges are dropped due to lack of evidence by prosecuting agencies. The data shows that very few cases turn into successful convictions. The year 2018 saw the least convictions compared to the past few years, for which data is available. The conviction rate at 15.4% is lower compared to 16.7% in 2016 and 33% in 2017. So the number of sedition cases filed in the past four years, that is since 2015, is 191. But trials were only completed in 43 cases. Only four cases out of these resulted in conviction. So what's the problem with a sedition charge then? The process itself is a punishment. Imagine being accused of sedition, which is a serious criminal charge. Everyone around you gets to know, your employer gets to know that you have been accused of sedition. You go into custody for 20 days. What happens to your life? That's Kunal Ambasta, an assistant professor at National Law School University. I spoke to him about the history, purpose and popularity of the sedition law. So if you look at the wording of section 124A IPC, what one can see very clearly is that the words that are used are also in themselves per se vague and this gives a lot of discretionary power to anybody who wants to use that provision to allege that that offence has taken place. Alright, since the words are weak and lend themselves to various interpretations, how can the law be prevented from being misused? There are some safeguards for this. The previous High Court and Supreme Court judgments provide a guideline regarding what constitutes sedition. A conscientious police officer could determine if the complaint lacks or holds merit. There is also an additional safeguard and that is that the government must sanction the prosecution of sedition cases. This means that no court can take cognizance of an offence until government sanction is given. However, even though these safeguards exist, we have seen the law being misused. All I have to do is register the FIR and then it's you who runs from pillar to post trying to get one of these remedies to ensure that one of these things ranging from acquittal to discharge to bail to quashing happens. If it doesn't happen, too bad for you. The sedition law is a colonial hand-me-down that was originally intended to deter colonial subjects from being disloyal to the crown. Following independence, the law was retained to help the brand new Indian state establish its authority over its land and its people. But is it time now, after 73 years, to get rid of it? You see, uh, the argument has been that this provision is uh, necessary for national security that doing away with this provision opens the door to seditious behaviour. If you see, the core of this argument is slightly speculative, that this will happen in case this statute is not there. We don't actually know what will happen. And of course, there are other provisions in criminal laws that can look at creating communal tension or disorder, etc. Rioting, all of those provisions are covered. One thing that we must understand is that <coughs> no government would want to do away with this. If you have a vague provision on the basis of which you can generally arrest, prosecute people you do not like and you can always say that what they are doing is promoting disaffection towards the country or some vague ground such as that, why would you want to give away that power? Governments change 
parties come and go but sedition remains and it is used with equal impunity by all governments so what is the threshold for sedition can yelling free kashmir be called a seditious act again because sedition is so unclear it is so vague i can interpret that free kashmir to be a call for secession in which case you would reasonably agree with me and say this is seditious if i'm advocating that a part of the country should break away from the country it is it is seditious however if i'm advocating the fact that kashmiris should be free to, to move around in the country or in their own state that mobile internet which has been snapped or other things that have been taken away should be restored it might not be seditious right who explains what this should be read as right and that is the problem with sedition right it is its vagueness leads to this large gray area right where i might mean one thing you might understand something else you might go and lodge the fire with the government saying that the ipc provision needs to be retained to effectively combat anti national secessionist and terrorist elements it seems that for better or for worse for now sedition law is here to stay